Hello, this is Dean McDonald from TechSkills. In this video, I'll describe and demonstrate how to install a motherboard into a computer case. Let's begin. Since I will be handling components in this video, I want to make sure I'm protected from electrostatic discharge, or ESD. In this case, I'll use an anti-static wrist strap. Make sure that this is tight on my wrist. Here's an anti-static mat connected to a grounding wire, which is connected to a grounded surge protector. Computer cases have holes in them to allow the integrated I.O. adapters on the motherboard to be able to stick out the back of the case. To hold these in, there's generally an I.O. plate which gets installed on the case and this will allow all these integrated components to be able to stick out the back of the case. Some motherboards will come with their own I.O. plates. Some cases will have various uh, configurations to allow different layouts. Some of them, like this one, also have some punch outs so this one says RJ45, so if I had an integrated network card, I could punch out this blank and the RJ45 connector that was on the motherboard could come out the back. Some cases have I.O. plates that snap into place. This case happens to have an I.O. plate that gets held in place by two screws. So I put the plate in place and then connect these screws to hold the I.O. plate in place. and I tighten the plate using a screwdriver. To hold the motherboard in the case, first I need to install brass or plastic standoffs. These will hold the motherboard off of this metal plate in the back of the case. To be able to do this, I need to line up my motherboard and put the standoffs in the proper holes. This case can support ATX motherboards, baby ATs, mini ATX, micro ATX, so there's a series of screws. I need to look at my motherboard and put the standoffs in the proper location. Motherboard I'll be installing is an ATX motherboard. In this case, right on the case plate, it indicates to put screws in holes that are marked with an A. In this case, we have an AC hole, so this hole right here would be used if I had an ATX or a micro ATX. So I take my brass standoff and I insert it into this hole, screw it into place, and these should only need to be finger tightened. So I need to put the screws in the rest of the holes that are designed for the ATX or all the ones that are marked A on my computer case. I have all the motherboard standoffs installed, so now I can prepare my motherboard for installation into the case. It's much easier to work on a motherboard when it's outside the case, so if I'm installing a new motherboard, I generally will install the CPU and heatsink and the RAM before I put it into the case. So in this case I have an ATX motherboard, I have the CPU and the memory installed, now I can insert this into the case. Now that the case and the motherboard are prepared, I can install it into the case. Gently hold on to the motherboard, set it inside the case, and then I need to line up all the integrated components with the I.O. plate so I line that up, slide the motherboard into place, and then I can place the screws to hold the motherboard in place. It can be tricky to hold the motherboard and put in the screws at the same time. I like to do one of the screws in the middle of the board to hold it in place. I don't have a magnetic screwdriver, so I generally just hold the screw in the screwdriver, hold the motherboard in place, and then carefully screw in one of the screws. With the one screw in place, that holds the motherboard in place, and then I can finger tighten all the other screws, and then use my screwdriver to tighten the rest. I've installed all the motherboard case screws with my fingers, and then I went back with a screwdriver and just tightened these slightly. You want to just make sure they're snug but not too tight. You can damage the motherboard if you over tighten them. To install the AGP card, I first remove the blank that corresponds to the AGP slot. Then I grip the card by the edges. There's a little tab on the card that needs to fit between the case and the motherboard. So I'll line that tab up and then I'll also line up the slot for the AGP card. Slide this into place. And then sometimes you need to press on these pretty firmly. Make sure that the card goes all the way into the slot. And then make sure that the I.O. holder or the tab right here 
is lined up with the screw hole. With the card installed, I can install the screw that holds it into place. Tighten that with a screwdriver and that should hold the video card in place. I repeat that same process with any other I.O. cards. In this case I'm going to install a network interface card. This one happens to be a PCI card. Next I will install all the case connections, the LED lights and all the switches to all the connections on the motherboard. This connector on the motherboard says HD LED. That corresponds to the HDD LED from the case. So I just line up this connection, slide it into place. Now I've connected my hard drive activity LED light. Now I repeat this same process connecting the power switch, the reset switch, the external speaker, and the power LED light. This case and this motherboard, they're clearly labeled, not always the case. You may need to check with the motherboard manufacturer, look at the owner's manual to make sure that you connect all the case connections properly. This motherboard has two audio connections. I'll connect one end of an audio cable to the motherboard. It generally has a locking tab that locks it into place. The other end of the audio cable gets connected into the optical drive. This cable provides audio from the optical drive directly to the sound card. Next I can install the data ribbon cables. Next I connect the power leads. Then I connect the AT power supply connection to the motherboard. This should snap into place. So now I have all my power connections to all my devices. With the motherboard installed and all the devices connected, it's time to boot up the computer and test to make sure everything works properly. I connect a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor, boot up the computer, and verify it's working properly. The BIOS indicated one power on self-test beat. I'm getting video. It's identifying all the devices. And then this machine does have Windows installed on the hard drive, so it should start booting into Windows. And there it is. I have successfully installed the motherboard and the computer is running properly. In the video I showed you how to install a motherboard into a computer case. I connected all the components and booted the computer to make sure that everything was functioning. You should practice this so you're proficient with it. Get some old computers or even some working computers, remove the motherboard, reinstall it, and make sure that you can connect all the components and verify everything is working. Good luck and thanks for watching.